statement as to whether we can really call ourselves a tolerant in diverse society if we deny the Billy Graham Association a platform in this country. There is certainly a row brewing here in Sheffield tonight. All the venues he wanted are turning him down. This attempt to silence Franklin Graham is very concerning. If they can do it to him, who else can they do it to? Culture has changed and we feel so small. Why don't we just be quiet and just live our own lives? No, God hasn't called us to be quiet. He's called us to preach. Tonight, I want you to know this. God loves you. More and more Christians, more and more churches have got intimidated. Many just feel bewildered and scared and stay silent. The ones that have the courage to speak out often get into trouble. Always just pray. Uh, Lord, just give me an opportunity to present the gospel. I see a city, and I think, what avenues can we take? What can we do to get their attention so that they'll hear about God that loves them, who sent a savior to this world to die for them? And it's just the way I'm wired. I'm always looking for opportunity. And so we want to take different venues and, and try to really touch this country. You preach here, you're preaching to the world. When we first started working on this tour, we had no idea what we were getting into. My job's to pull together the tours and the events that we do. That is the logistics that involve everything from the production, the venue, the artists. At first, the site visits were normal. We found a lot of great venues. The scheduling was working. The venues seemed pleased to have us come in. We were getting support from area churches. Over a thousand had come to be a part of this uh, proclamation of the gospel of Jesus Christ. The excitement is building. We started announcing the events when we first heard about it. I heard about that tour and I thought that I've got to be a part of this. I'm excited for people coming to know Jesus and all the churches working together. Come join us and see for yourself. Uh, everybody is welcome. We want you to come. I got a call late on a Friday or Saturday night from one of my coworkers saying that there was a missed call from the UK. And then within a few hours, got an email from one of the venues it was very abrupt and strange, essentially saying they were canceling our event. Franklin Graham banned. That is what the mayor of Liverpool, England, is saying tonight. Graham was supposed to make a stop there this summer on his tour of the UK, but now leaders are saying not so fast. We had a contract that was fully executed. We had had it for quite a while, and so it just felt, it was very unusual. And it just felt like a match lit. It just snowballed quickly into this situation unlike I've ever seen in my career. A lot of people in Sheffield from some minority groups don't agree with what he has to say. In fact, they're offended by some of his comments. And they've now got a campaign underway to get this event canceled. Various groups got together to write a letter to those running the venues calling for the stops to be canceled. Some venues also canceled bookings because of protests about... All statements. the venues he wanted are turning him down because of his controversial views. The most common themes around um, the comments being made about Franklin Graham by the activists who want to stop him are that he is hateful, that he speaks uh, hate speech. There are some, Franklin, who would say that you're a preacher of hate. How do you respond to these people? I'm not coming to preach hate. I'm here to preach about 
a savior. When Jesus came, he didn't come to condemn the world. He came to save the world. And I'm not coming to speak on gay, lesbian issues. I'm coming here to talk about Jesus Christ and him only. Everyone is welcome to our meetings. We don't exclude anybody. When the news came out about these cancellations, there was understandably frustration and anger for those locally that had been a part of preparing for the event. Franklin knew people were frustrated and concerned. He immediately felt the best thing to do would be to come explain what he saw was happening. We were falsely accused, and based on those false accusations, the venues took their action, and we wanted to be vindicated. I was asked at lunch if we ever had uh, venues canceled on us before. No, uh, I don't think so. Uh, this is a new one. But our goal is just to preach the gospel yes. and give an invitation. Uh, Jesus didn't come to condemn the world. He came to save the world. So I'm not coming to condemn anybody. This attempt to silence somebody of the stature of Franklin Graham is very concerning. More and more Christians, more and more churches have got intimidated. There is a temptation to be silent when it comes to um, the gospel of Jesus. Something has to be done to make sure that there is freedom of speech because that's the real issue. It is freedom of speech because if they can do it to him, who else can they do it to? We've got a lot of people who are criticizing. We've got a lot of people who are condemning, and we feel so small. Why don't we just be quiet and just live our own lives? And No, we're not going to let that stop us from calling men and women to repentance. God hadn't called us to be quiet. He's called us to preach. So I don't believe in backing up, okay? I don't believe in conceding an inch, okay? So we're coming. God's called us to preach, that's what we're going to do. You're planning to come here in May, but all the venues that you've booked, big venues, have cancelled your appearance. Does that give you pause for thought? I believe this is a religious freedom issue. Uh, we've broken no laws. Uh, we're coming simply to share with uh, the people of this country how they can have a relationship with God through faith in His Son, Jesus Christ. There are some that say that you and your father are, are very different. Some say that you maybe are a more divisive figure in your leadership than your father. How would you respond to that? When my father first came to the UK, they tried to stop him from coming. Wouldn't it be wonderful to see evil and materialism and secularism hurled back by the power of the Spirit of God? Before the campaign, the reactions of the British press were significant. A number of the London dailies had been openly antagonistic and hostile. They had members of parliament. There was petitions to keep him from coming. He was rather controversial. in his Christmas message said, we stand with Christians everywhere in solidarity and will defend your right to practice your faith. So can we have a statement as to whether we can really call ourselves a tolerant, inclusive and diverse society which respects freedom of speech, whatever one's religion or beliefs, if we deny the Billy Graham Association a platform in this country? And although venues are allowed to take their own decisions about whether or not to host Franklin Graham during his upcoming visit, like all service providers, they must be careful not to discriminate unlawfully on grounds of religion and belief. And the price of living in a free, plural society is tolerating views and beliefs we disagree with or are even offended by. And this is fundamentally important. It is a sad truth that many people who tout themselves as being liberal are only liberal about what they like and are very intolerant of the views they disagree with. One of the things you hear is that 
views like Franklin Graham's, i.e. the gospel, divide people. Well, all views divide people. And it's particularly true when that opinion is about matters of ultimate meaning, matters of ultimate purpose, matters of ultimate truth. By its very nature, the gospel is a challenge. It challenges people's mindsets, it challenges people's lifestyles. So there is an offense in the gospel. There is a freedom of speech issue in all this. We get to a point where a speaker like Franklin Graham is no longer able to declare God's love. Uh, well, then where does that leave us? We're not just thinking Franklin Graham, we're thinking of the church. This is something that's worth fighting for. This is for the churches in the UK. We're going to take the legal course and pursue this because we had signed contracts. Unless we challenge it now, then what will happen shortly, I, I believe, is it'll be very difficult for Christians or Christian organizations to actually operate in the public square. This is hard. I never want to be involved in lawsuits. I don't want to be involved in social media battles. And yet, we recognize how important this is. You've got to be careful because there are risks in litigation. And what you don't want is to go to court and lose. Sometimes it's important not to take a case on, as to take a case on, because you can set bad precedents. And I think in the, in the email, they concede that they were talking to the other venues. Yeah. Yeah. The only reason we're pursuing this is to preserve opportunity for the proclamation of the gospel in the public square. That's the goal. We're going now to an emergency broadcast from the World Health Organization. Europe has now become the epicenter of the pandemic. The coronavirus is the biggest threat this country has faced for decades. All parts of the country are now on an emergency footing. So mass gatherings, uh, we're now moving emphatically away from. COVID would have given us the perfect cover to just walk away and accept the cancellations. We had a decision to make in that moment, which was, do we continue on or do we pull the plug? We were not canceled over COVID. We were canceled over the message of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I felt for his name's sake, we needed to stand and defend this. If we don't fight it, what are the consequences of doing nothing? to the trial in Glasgow, Scotland. And yesterday, I spent a couple of hours just reading through all the documentation. My, my nervousness going into today is just knowing when to speak and when to be quiet and keeping things simple. I think if this doesn't go our way, the opposition, so to speak, is emboldened to continue this, this course of behavior. Lord, we ask for your appointee as the sheriff today, Lord, to have ears to hear the truth. The win for us would be being allowed to reschedule the tour. Victory looks like being on the stage in these venues that cancel and the gospel's going forward. That's the goal. It was emotional for me coming into this, and I think right now, today, walking out of court, you know, you exhale a little bit, but this is still not over. This was the first day of testimony in this trial, so we clearly have a long way to go. This is like the first inning of a very long game.
we're not backing down, we're not going home. As long as this takes, we're gonna do what we need to do. In the middle of the legal battle, we were trying to keep dialogue open with the venues and try to show them a path that could result in a win-win solution for them, a new event for us and a successful event for them. And so a couple of them began to talk to us, and we were able to resolve the differences, and they gave us a date, which we took. Once we had venues coming back saying, let's go, that allowed us to get back on task of saying, hey, we're going to do this tour. Great. We're in good shape. Getting ready to start the music. After almost 28 months of work and prayer and wondering and waiting, finally going to have an event. But the intensity of the situation has gone up a lot. Literally even a couple of days out from the Liverpool event, the powers that be threw some things at us I think they felt would cause us to cancel the event. just a few hours till the doors open and we'll be getting ready to present the gospel to the men and women that God has drawn. As we go to prayer, let's first of all, let's just ask that if there's any sin in our life that God would just uh, take it and forgive us and cleanse us. I always just ask, Lord, if there's anything in my life that's not right, take it, clean it, whatever, because I want to be fit and ready to do your work. That's one of the reasons we come together as a team like this, to give us a, a, a chance to make sure that we're ready. Every time you come to a place like this, there's always a battle, there's always a challenge because this is spiritual. The only hope for this nation is God. Only hope. God's getting ready to do something. I'm not quite sure what he's getting ready to do, but he's gonna do something. so good to be with you here in Liverpool. We've been looking forward to this for some time. And we just thank God that... To actually see the event happen in Liverpool with all of the opposition, that is honestly mind-blowing. There's something palpable that's going on in the spiritual realm here. This event in Liverpool really feels significant. Jesus Christ hung on that cross for you. He took your sins to that cross. He took my sins to the cross. I'm a sinner. And he was buried in a grave in my place. But on the third day, God raised his son, Jesus Christ, to life. He's not dead. He's alive. He's here in Liverpool tonight.
Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. There are many religions in the world. There's only one Jesus. Religion cannot save your soul from hell, but Jesus can save your soul from hell. If you're willing to put your faith and trust in him tonight. We need to be bold and preach the gospel and not to be ashamed, not to be afraid, not to back down. No, the gospel is for every culture, for every generation. I'm gonna stand in a world that's breaking sin for a truth unchanging. I'm not ashamed, I can stand the cost. I'll be right now, put up the cross and stand. Jesus, help me stand. I'm not ashamed, I consider the cost. I'm not ashamed, I'll be right here at the foot of the cross and stand. God loves you. Reverend, you are welcome to London. And this is going to be the first fruit of a long journey. When you were, you know, the problem arose and you couldn't come. Yeah. I believe that was the timing of God for you to come down. London has been really hit by the pandemic, but there is a sense that uh, people have been shaken to their knees and uh, there is a readiness to hear the good news of Jesus Christ. This is a place that, no question, there's been no struggle, but it's all been part of God's time. And so I feel great that we're here in God's time. I think it's important to understand that God has a plan and a purpose. When they canceled us, that created a lot of news. Then all of a sudden, people were aware that we were coming and that we had been canceled. And so this publicity helped in a, in a wonderful way. The enemy meant it for bad, but God used it for good. With all the controversy that has happened with this tour, I believe that God is using it to make his voice heard. If there is anything that this did for the body of Christ was unite us. The fact that, that Franklin Graham and the Billy Graham Association has been able to get to a point where he is able to speak openly about God's love is brilliant, because that means that we can keep doing the same. Tonight, I want you to know this. God loves you. If you can't remember anything else, remember this. God loves you. But we have a problem, and that problem is called sin. And sin separates us from God. It's a barrier. It's like a wall. When Jesus Christ went to the cross, and he was nailed to that cross, he took your sins. At that moment, God laid on his son the sins of mankind. And he died and shed his blood for you. So tonight, if you're here and you aren't sure that your soul is secure in the hands of God, I want you to do something right now. I want you to just get up out of your seat, make your way to an aisle, and come stand down front, and we'll have a word of prayer together, okay? was calling me to say, you have done wrong and it's okay, I forgive you and I love you. It was complete surrender. It really hit home for me. My heart was beating on my chest. So I stormed down the stairs and I came straight to the front and asked for forgiveness. There's no doubt in my mind, I have to go. I have to go. I want to be saved. I want to go to heaven. I can turn away from the sin now and move forward with Christ. 
and I feel a big weight off my chest. I really do. To see so many people come forward, you just see how all of this has come together for a purpose. gospel is power and the enemy of our souls hates the gospel and he would love us to be quiet we cannot be quiet and of course we think the gospel is the best news ever we think it is the hope for our nation and so we're not going to be silenced we need to be allowed to declare what we believe especially if it's a loving message This has been a long time coming. To God be the glory. We're just grateful to Almighty God for the doors that he has opened. I'll be going back to the UK, be going to London this month to preach and proclaim the gospel. And then next year, we're going to Glasgow. One of the cities that had canceled us, uh, we've worked that out and we're going back and going to take advantage of an open door. I'm thankful for the churches, the pastors, that have stood with us, that haven't backed down, that have prayed for us, that are working with us now. And we're gonna to continue to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. We're not gonna sit down, we're not gonna back up. We're just gonna move forward, taking the gospel to every inch of country that we can, to each and every person that we can. So thank you for your prayers. Thank you for your financial support. We couldn't do it without you. God bless you. Partner with the Billy Graham Evangelistic Association in our mission of taking the gospel to the ends of the earth. As a thank you for your support, we'll send you Billy Graham's book, God's Love for You. Visit billygraham.tv or call 877-567-8989. Your gift can have an eternal impact by supporting Franklin Graham festivals and Will Graham celebrations around the world. To partner with us, call or log on today.